Good afternoon there. Th uh, thanks a lot. Uh, first of all, I would like to take an opportunity to say thanks to IESite for giving us the opportunity to express our experience, which we have learned from last few weeks from IES in transforming the BIM model into a model which is useful for the IES. Uh, first of all, I would like to introduce myself. I'm, uh, my name is Sahid Ashraf, and I'm working as a Principal Sustainability and Energy Engineer in CBG Consultant. And uh, I'm a, a, accompanied by my fellow colleague, Ross Thompson, who is working as a Senior Sustainability and Energy Engineer. And we are working in the industry for nearly about six or seven years now. And uh, secondly, I would like to tell you about the, the company profile we are working for. We are M&E and Sustainability Company. We have got a dedicated uh, building physics department and we are using the VE software day in and day out. We have got two offices in Oxford where we are arm based as well and we have got one office in London. We are nearly about 60 plus staff in all three offices which include Oxford and London. We have got it's a privately owned company which has got three directors. We have got turnover of nearly about 3.6 million. The most of our success is based on our repeat work, right? So you can you can understand right how satisfied the clients are. So we have got 85% of repeat work, and we are working mostly in some uh, the sector which is mentioned, right? Which is education, accommodation, offices, healthcare, transport, network rail, and far too many uh, sectors, right? We are working, but mostly our work is coming from the education sector. Now I would like to tell you about what what sort of services our company is offering. We are basically M&E design, design engineers with low carbon consultants as well. We have got four low, low carbon consultants within the company. We have got level three, level four, level five energy assessors. We are ESOS lead assessor, lead assessor as well. Code assessor, we are BRIAM AP as well and BRIAM itself. We are using dynamic thermal modeling and the software which we are using is PEIES virtual environment. And they, we are conducting energy audit based on the project, right? If it's required the energy audit, we are conducting the SSC feasibility study as well, infrastructure planning. Revit is the key now, nowadays, okay? And we have got a dedicated BIM modeling team, which is being supervised by uh, Laurie, Laurie Richard, one of our coordinator. We are accredited IES, dynamic thermal model assessors. We are accredited passive house consultant as well. And they, just to just to give you an idea, right, of our experience, right, we have got, as I mentioned before as well, that we have got nearly about 40% of repeat work coming from the education sector. So we have got a good portfolio of the schools, which we have done. We have basically completed in the past from the concept stage to the completion stage. This one is some of the examples. And there are some of the award-winning projects as well, right, which we have completed, which include BSF as well, Priority School Building Program, which you are working right now. Now, just to give you an overview of our services, which we are providing within our company. We are using dynamic uh, uh, thermal modeling tool, which is IES itself. Okay. And uh, by using that tool, we are able to justify the overheating based on the project requirement. If it's, if it's TM52, BB101, BB101, BB102, or SIPSI guide A, we are able to justify ventilation rate by using the software itself, part L compliance, by using the DSM site of the software. We are using the IES thermal, uh, <coughs> Apache thermal site of the uh, software for the detailed energy modeling, BRAM calculation to justify ENE1, ENE4, HEA1, HEA4 thermal comfort credit. And uh, now we have started using because we were we were involved with uh, one of the clients where we were investigating priority school building program. And it was a good start from IES as well that we were they provided us the software which we were able to use for daylight autonomy and TM52 at that time. And solar shading analysis, which we are using quite often now, depending upon the stage of the project. We are using the CFD module of the of the software itself for the internal and external airflow modeling and movement analysis, right? Which is one of the requirements for priority school building program, right? To investigate the temperature at a different height. Now, just to give you an idea, right? How we use the VE software within our industry and within our company as well. We are nearly about between three to four engineers altogether. We have got a site bait license, which is the rolling license we are using. We have got different spreadsheet tools for the data collection and the quality assurance. We use IES tabular data nowadays, right, to transfer the data from Excel sheet to IES and from IES to Excel sheet. We used to use, and we are still using, Google SketchUp and Model IT based on how complicated the building is, right? Are they better to, use, to do the model directly in the Model IT or to do the model in the Google SketchUp? But now, from last few months, as we know that the industry is moving towards the BIM modeling route, so, most of the architects are developing the Revit model, so we have started converting the Revit model into IES usable model in the form of GBXML format, and definitely it is due to the help of 
IES, IES sulfide because they have helped us quite a lot on one of the case study from which we have learned. Now, it just to just to give you an idea about the software, right? Where the software is within our industry. As I said, that we are using day in and day out, right? And we are doing all these kind of stuff. We are <clears throat> we are investigating daylighting, modeling, airflow, UK compliance regulation, BM investigation, hatchback, energy carbon. One of the sites right, which you have recently started using right, is value management because the client is looking for the cheapest available option to achieve the target. The targets may be based on Part L compliance or for Part F or Priam, London planning or the council planning. planning. So it all depends, right, what sort of target we are, we have, got, we have been given from the client. We are basically taking those things on board, okay, and able to process all these things, right, we are able to analyze the glazing, glazing specification. We are able to suggest the architect what sort of best U values they can go for. Because if you're going to improve the U value, that's going to cost the client money, and the money cl client want to save, right? So we are able to justify, based on lean, clean, and green approach, right? What is the best optimum solution available, right, for their project, right? And how they can hit the targets required by the planning, or the console, or the preamp. And we are able to basically provide the output in the form of premium evidence, compliance report, and all all this comes uh, uh, comes at the end of the project. Right? We we are involved from the concept to the completion stage. Now I will just say hand hand it over to my colleague Ross Thompson. Right, who will be able to guide you through right what we have learned in the last few weeks. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Sahid. So as Sahid said, over the past few weeks we've actually been working with IES to see how we can get um, the IES software. And the um, and Revit to communicate a lot better. And I'm going to take you through a couple of case studies where we've actually had a go at doing that. Uh, and the first one here is a uh, large um, apartment building in Brixton, so pretty central London. And it was quite a challenging Revit model that we received from the architect. So the way they created it was that they built the um, the shell of the building in one Revit model, and then for each flat in the building. They built those as separate models, which were then referenced in. Um, so that added a little bit of complication into how, how it was set up. And one of the kind of key challenges, really, we wanted to see whether we could export this into uh, into IES for analysis, um, including details of the balconies. And I'll come on to it in a little bit more detail later. But we were looking to do some overheating analysis and looking at the kind of shading effects there. And um, Another part of the challenge really was trying to find the correct room volume. So when we initially went to export it, we found that some of the rooms were taken as being sort of too small, as in only going up to the ceiling height. When we were ideally wanted them to go up to the slab height for our uh, for our analysis model there. Uh, so what we're really trying to achieve then is uh, there's quite a few positives we could get out if we could uh, optimize this process. I mean, having this software integrating and communicating. To make everything run a lot quicker and smoother, getting the information between it. And um, perhaps something that was slightly more unexpected was that in our company we have separate departments for IES and separate departments for Revit. And this whole process is kind of getting the communication between the two uh, to flow a lot, a lot better and a lot more smoothly than it was to get a little bit more knowledge between the um, between the two software packages and disciplines, which can only really be a good thing. And uh, some of the other things we were finding is that just by simply exporting the Revit model, that's already got data like room names in there, and it sounds a really insignificant thing, but if you're working on a huge project in IES and you've got to enter the room names for you know, hundreds of rooms, it can actually take a considerable amount of time to get that all to go through. Uh, so we definitely found um, a good opportunity there as well. Uh, so in this particular case, we, it wasn't without problems really, and as mentioned, Previously, the um, the volumes that were actually coming through uh, weren't quite perfect, and that's because uh, the way that the spaces have been set up in Revit, some of them were uh, attached, like I say, to the ceiling, and some of them were attached to the, the floor level. So we had to basically go through that and make sure that each um, that each space was tagged to the to the floor level in Revit, which resolved all that issue. And we also found problems the way the architect had created the model in a few cases. Uh, there was there were small gaps, for example, internal partition walls weren't quite touching the floor slab, so those had to be all closed out, and just minor little pieces uh, getting corrected. And unfortunately, uh, we did work on it for a, a small amount of time, but having the linked models did cause an issue 
and the main problem there was really the um, just the, the huge amount of detail that had gone into the individual models of the apartments so the architect because they had like a sort of limited number of types of apartment that were then repeated throughout this um, this development they had a huge amount of detail in those and it just it was almost just too much so perhaps if we were to take it a step further we'd have to look at simplifying that and um, unfortunately we couldn't get the balconies to export either ideally we'd want those to come through into IS as an obstruction um, and then one other outcome was that it I was using this process which is going from Revit uh, via GVXML and uh, going into IES you result in the uh, rooms with inner volumes in the IES model so that's a bit of a um, it's a bit different to what I was used to but there's no reason to say it's um, it's right or wrong it's just, I've just been using IES for many years so that's kind of stuck in my ways of looking at models with uh, simple single line walls but there's no reason why we can't adapt really to embrace this new process and then let's talk about what we actually did with the model in, in this case um, we picked this as a case study after I'd already taken it through but so this was done on the model that I previously made in Google SketchUp which actually took quite a considerable amount of time and what we were looking to do in this apartment building was to really look at um, the effects of overheating there was a planning target um, to obviously um, hit certain overheating standards we were trying to look at you know optimizing the glazing how much do these balconies um, really shade the building there was also uh, some sort of complicated buttress details as well that were giving quite a lot of shade to it and we we're sort of looking at which areas would perhaps need cooling which areas would need solar glazing and we found that the, the solar analysis tools in AS are really really useful for this we couldn't really think of another way of doing it on such a kind of complicated set of geometry so to conclude on that one we were actually able to successfully export the building shell and um, if we've been able to do that that could actually save us quite a lot of time in um, in the whole process because with the tools available in model IT that could just be divided up and then you'd have all the um, all the crept building and perhaps all the uh, all the windows and openings would be in there as well but yeah unfortunately on this particular case the linked models did cause some issues and there's basically just too much there and it couldn't quite handle it and couldn't get it through and unfortunately we couldn't export the balconies but again they could have been added so perhaps the time of going um, you could definitely get something out of Revit that would save a lot of time but it wasn't quite there yet so there's still a little way to go in terms of finding ways to do this but I'm sure with a bit more development we'll be able to resolve many of these issues and then we also tried it again on a second project and this is a um, this is a, quite a large school building in um, in Suffolk and previously again so we had uh, a couple of challenges um, at first there was just we we're just getting an error that it wouldn't import or export and then we're also finding segmented rooms so if you look at this picture here what I mean by that is that what you'd hope to be a clean face on the room had sort of lots of diagonal lines and it wasn't really the kind of ideal geometry you'd want to analyze I mean, maybe it would give you the right result but you'd probably find that something would go wrong with that kind of geometry and you just want something nice and clean to you know, apply construction details to and another key element of this design was that the uh, the arrangement of the openings was to have a structural opening with a fixed glazed panel next to a louver and the louver would provide the ventilation to the room so ideally we were hoping to get the model to come through and have those as sort of a separate um, separate area set up in IES so we can apply you know, the uh, the ventilation properties to those and get the uh, desired results there for the ventilation flow rates and things like that when we come to look at overheating um, and we were with this project we were actually able to get um, a good a good uh, building through into into model IT and into IES the uh, the first problem with the import error was that the uh, the building had been set up in phases which seemed a bit puzzling so from working on the project I wasn't aware that I think it's all going to be built in one go so I think perhaps as that was created architecturally that was just not really a setting that was considered and um, perhaps things were sort of copy and pasted without really worrying about that because it doesn't perhaps affect other disciplines working on the model and then by deleting room separators in Revit we were able to resolve all that segmentation and get a nice clean uh, simple geometry there and uh, we also had to have a look at which elements were set up as being room bounding because uh, some of the columns were and some of them weren't and it was basically causing problems uh, certain columns really shouldn't have been and it was almost you know creating holes actually going through the entire building where those columns weren't correctly set up so again I think 
the architect wouldn't you know really be affected by how that was set up in their day to day work so they hadn't perhaps paid it, paid uh, any attention to how how they were how they were entered and which ones were set to be room bounding but it was an easy fix we just had to go around and um and select them all and we got a good model through into into IES and again this was done um sort of slightly after we'd already done our first model so we had already built the geometry in uh, in model IT and we were able to uh do UK carbon emissions calculations for building regulations and of course do the overheating as well so the software is a really useful tool there and then so to give a summary on that project I think that one worked really pretty well on that and we've got a useful a useful building out of it um, as I mentioned earlier one of the kind of key objectives was to get a uh, separation between the windows and louvers and we found there definitely was a setting there to do it but we just couldn't quite get it to work as we uh, as we would have hoped I think that really just comes down to how that's all set up in Revit how that window is set up and how that louver is set up and if you get the right properties on that so again I think the key is to you know, really work closely with the architect and make sure you, you think about what you want to get out of it and um, and get these things set up yeah so it all, so it can all work smoothly then when you export it so to give a sort of conclusion over the overall the process we think you know it's potentially a really useful tool for us and it's obviously a bit of further investigation to go we've just been working you know with IES over the past few weeks so we're still very new to this process and we haven't been had much experience with it at all in the past really we've never used it in part of our process before so um there's definitely yeah, a little way to go but you know we can see that the power is there to do this really slickly and of course it's quite key to work closely with the architect and it's quite important that the model's set up and parameters that perhaps wouldn't normally affect other disciplines if you just using that you know for for visuals or for coordination then perhaps some of these uh, like subtler options in Revit wouldn't affect you um, so you've got to make sure that it is all set up correctly and then one of the other questions we sort of had as I mentioned earlier is that in our company it's structured to have separate IES um, engineers and separate Revit engineers and we found that really the ideal people to train up are the people with the experience on Revit as um, it's easier to get them you know you just give them a bit of an insight into the kind of models that are required and the kind of output that's required for IES because there's obviously going to be such a range of different different things received if you work as a kind of consulting engineer like we do architects are going to set up things in so many different ways that you really need to have a good a good knowledge of Revit to be able to um, to be able to do this and yeah that's um, that's it so basically to summarize that so it's been a really useful exercise and uh, moving forward we're actually already trying to do it on a on a third project and uh, we can definitely see the potential there and we've had some uh, some promising results from the process uh, thank you very much for the opportunity